What's up everyone? Today we're going to do a really interesting problem where we are going to find all of the duplicates in an array in which the array, all of the elements of the array are between one and the size of the array. So we have a couple examples here. In all these cases you can see that our precondition holds up that in this case the length of the array is three and so the maximum element of this array is three and in this case I mean they're four the maximum length is four so we could have any of the values one two three or four but in this case we only have one and two and you can see that this one obviously doesn't have any duplicates so our result is the empty in this case it's going to be a list in this one we have one duplicate this one we also have one duplicate and in this one we actually have two duplicates so fairly straightforward and let's just dive right into the problem so the first thing that we want to do as always is that we want to clarify any questions we might have about the problem so i had a couple little questions one of which is do we care about the order of the results like in this case we can see that even though two appeared first we are returning our results in order and honestly this was just uh, arbitrary choice and i think it looks nice when i'm drawing it but this doesn't matter for the problem so if so it's good to ask but in this case i'm not going to worry about what the order of the output is another thing that i might be want to check with my interviewer about is whether or not the result itself can contain duplicates or should contain duplicates because maybe the right response to this would be one one two two or something like that because we're showing all of the duplicated items for example you know maybe we want to know how many times each number is duplicated and so we could represent it that way but i don't want to do that that seems a little weird to me so i'm just going to assume that every that regardless of how many times a number shows up in my original array i'm only going to have a single duplicate or i'm only going to show the duplicate once in the result so let's go right into how we could solve this problem and as I always recommend, I think we should start with the brute force solution. And that's pretty straightforward in this case. We can literally just go through each element of the array and check whether there are any other elements in the array that are equal to it, right? So we could start with this first element and then we would iterate through all the other elements and see if they're equal to one. Then we'd go to the second element and iterate through all the other elements and see if they're equal and so on and so forth. So. Yes, that's not a good solution. It's going to be a O of n squared runtime, right? Because we're going through the entire array n times. But it is the brute force solution, and it is something. So hopefully, it's also obvious that we can optimize this a bit by doing one of two things. One, when we're iterating through the array, we could add everything into a set. So this is the brute force solution. But alternatively, we could add everything to a set. So we would basically say that as we see an item, we integer, we add it to the set. And then every time we see an item, every time we see a new item, we check in the set to see if it's already in there. And then if it is already in there, then we know it's a duplicate, right? It's a pretty standard algorithm for us to find out whether something's a duplicate or not. And that's pretty good. You know, that's going to take O of n time because we only have to iterate through the array once. But it's also going to take O of n space, right? Because we have to store up to every element in the array in our set. And so that's good, but that's not great. So maybe we can do better. Another option that we could do is to sort our array, right? If we sorted our array, then we can tell very easily whether an item is duplicated or not because we know that the duplicate is either the item immediately before it or the item immediately after it and so we can compute the duplicates in linear time in a sorted array but we still have to sort our array so that's going to take o of n log n time right because sorting takes o of n log n time but in this case it's going to take o of one space and so that's sort of a trade-off but 
what we want and so we could do any of these solutions right any of these would be a good solution but maybe we can do better and the key thing that we want to look at now is that we have a piece of information in this question that we haven't even considered up until this point and that's this we know that every value in our array is going to be between one and the length of the array and so how can we maybe encode data that we've already seen a certain number without actually creating any additional data structures or without using more than constant extra space? And the answer is that since our numbers, our values are only from one to the length of the array, we can encode those in the existing array. And let me show you how we can do that. So let's look at this uh, last example here, where we have 2, 1, 2, 1. And now we know that every value is in the, that every value in our array is between 1 and the length of the array. And so if we subtract 1, then we can make every value an index in the array, right? So because that would then go from 0, to the length of the array minus one, which is the same as the, as the indices of the array. And so we also know that all of our numbers are positive always because they're all greater than one in this, greater than or equal to one. And so we can encode our num our, whether we've seen a number or not in our array by flipping the sign of the index that that number corresponds to. And so let me show you what I mean. Let's say that we're going through this array and we want to know, we want to find all the duplicates. So we're going to look at the first value, which is two. And then we're going to say, okay, so now we've seen a two and we want to encode that in our array. And so we, as I said, we're going to have to subtract one from our value to convert it to an index. So we say that index equals two minus one, which equals one. And so we go to index one and we flip the bit or we flip the sign. And so now we get negative one. It doesn't change the value. We can still extract the original value from that because we know that we just have to take the absolute value to get the original value, but we've also encoded some additional information. Now we go come to the next item and we see that it's negative one or we extract the value to be one. And so the index is zero because it's one minus one. And then we're gonna encode this two, this zero index value to be negative two. So now we've encoded that we've seen a one because we negated this value at index zero. And we've seen a two because we negated the value at index one. Now we come to this third one and we see a two. And so we're gonna compute the index, which again is one. And then when we look here at our first value or at our index one in our array, we see that it's negative, And so we know that we've already seen that value. And so we can now say, okay, this must be a duplicate. And so let's add it into our result set or our result list. So we're going to add a two to our results. Then we come to this one and then we're not going to negate it again because it's already negative. So we, we just need to know that we've seen it at least once, right? And so we're just going to leave it be. And then for this last one, we're going to get our index is zero and we're going to come here and we're going to see that one's negative as well. So we add that to our set also, and then that's it. So we can return this set and hopefully that makes sense that way. And then, you know, after we go through this whole thing, we can run through the entire array and may and set everything equal to its absolute value, just so that we end up with the array that we started with. Not that it really matters too much, but it's a nice thing to do just for the, whoever's calling this function. So, but we are able to encode that data without using any extra space, right? And so this way with this solution, I'll just call this encoding. We get an O of N runtime and we get an O of one space complexity. Right, so it, with the space complexity, we're not going to include the result set in our computation of the space because that's not how we do it. But we're just we're just considering all the space that we used for everything else, 
And so by doing this in this way, we can see that we can actually improve even over both of these algorithms, which were decent algorithms, they're not bad, but we can do even better. And so hopefully that makes sense. And let's go ahead and actually code up this solution. So I'm gonna start with, I'm just gonna define my function and I'm gonna call it, I'm, it's gonna return a list of integers. And I'm gonna call it find all duplicates. And it'll take in an array of integers. So the first thing we wanna do, and this isn't something I mentioned before, but I don't want to include duplicates in my result set. And so as you probably noticed, like if we were to add uh, another two here, then we would actually end up with this result set. And I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add everything to a set first. And so everything will be automatically deduplicated. And then I'm going to convert that set into a list which I'm gonna return. So just a slightly easier way for me to not have to worry at all about there being duplicates. And so I'm gonna say set of integers result set is going to be a new hash set and then I'm going to do exactly what I said I'm going to I was going to do before and we have to be a little bit careful here because there are a couple things going on one we have to make sure that we subtract properly from every time we're referring to an index because all of the values converted to their index have to be minus one and then the other thing is that we need to make sure that we manage our positives and negatives properly. So we just want to be careful as we go through this. So we're going to just loop through our array for int i equals 0, i is less than array.length, and i++. plus plus. We're going to first, I'm just going to create a variable for my index. So I'm going to say an index is going to be the absolute value of r i minus one. And so the reason we have to take the absolute value here is for exactly this what we had in this example, where when we started out, we first set this value to negative one, right? Because our first value was two. And so we set the so we flip the sign of the value at index one. And so then when we proceed to our next index, so on the second iteration through our loop, this value is already negative. And we don't want to try and reference index negative two. And so we want to just make sure that even if it's been negated, we're getting the proper value. So we're just going to go ahead and take the absolute value every time. And then we're going to say all we have to do is just check if, that val if the value at that index is negative or not. And if it's negative, then we know that we've already seen that. And if it's not negative, then we know that we haven't. And we have to set it to be negative. So it's as simple as if our index is less than 0, then we're just going to add this to our result set, right? So result set dot add math dot absolute value of our Right, so of our original value. We don't want to use the index because the index has had one subtracted to it. And we do want to take the absolute value again for the same reason that we're taking the absolute value here. So we're going to add that to our result set. And otherwise, we're going to set the value to be negative because we want to make sure that it is negated properly so that we're actually tracking all our duplicates. So I'm going to say our index equals negative r index. And this is going to be fine because we're only going to do this if the value is positive to start with. So we're not going to have to worry about like accidentally negating one that's already negative and then having it become positive again. So we with this condition, that's not something we have to worry about. And then finally, so that's going to get us our entire result set. And then as I said, I want to just be a good citizen and set all the values back to their original values. So I'm just going to iterate through the list again, and I'm going to set everything to be equal to its absolute value. 
So just ri is equal to math.absolute value of ri. And that way, if anyone's using the array later for anything, they don't get weirded out that something changed. And generally, I think good practice to leave things the way that you found them, if you can. And finally, all we have to do is convert our set into a list and return it. So I'm just going to use the array list constructor that takes in a set. So new array list result set. So that way we get a list that is deduplicated for us. And that's all there is to this, right? So once we figured out how we could use all the information in this problem, the solution is actually not very hard. The hard part is reasoning through the solution and reasoning through all the information that you have to get to coding up the solution. And so remember this process that we took to get there. We started with the brute force solution and then we looked at some more optimal solutions and then we made sure that we were considering all of the information that we had available to us to make sure that we were coming up with the most optimal solution that we could. And that's a really good way to make sure that you are doing the right, that you are getting the best solution that you can. Because even if you don't come up with the best solution, you still have a good solution. If you start with the brute force solution and then optimize from there, you're never gonna not get a solution to the problem. And the worst thing you could do is not be able to solve the problem at all. So I highly recommend taking this sort of structured approach. And lastly, let's just go through and test our code to make sure that it does what we think it should do. So I'm just going to use this very simple example. We're going to say we're going to start with our result set, which is just going to be empty. And then this is going to be r i equals 0. And so we're going to let's go through this. So i equals 0, index is going to be the absolute value of ri. So i is 0, ri is 2, and then index is going to be the absolute value of 2, which is 2, minus 1. So is 1. Then we're going to say if r index, which is or r1, which is this, is less than 0, we're going to add it to the result set, which it's not. Otherwise, we're going to say r index is going to be equal to negative r index. And so we negate this value here. Then we're going to come back. i is now equal to 1. So the index is going to be ri, which is the absolute value of ri, right? Which is 1 minus 1, which is 0. And then we're going to check whether r index, so r0 is negative, which is not. So again, we're going to negate it. And then finally, we come to this third value. So i is now equal to 2. Then absolute value 2 minus 1 is going to be equal to 1. And then we look up this index. So r index is equal to negative 1, which is less than 0. And so result set.add, we add math.absolute value of ri. And so ri, or r2, is 2. And so we add that to our result set. Then we're going to go through and we're going to remove these negatives and we're going to return a list of our result set. And so that's all there is to it. Hopefully that all made sense. I think it's a pretty interesting problem because you can really get sort of intricate with how you solve it. And definitely let me know down in the comments below or on the blog if you have any questions. And otherwise, I will see you guys again soon.